Hi, my name is Lisa Shaw, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about pre-cut applique shapes with the embroider with embroider machines. Now, most of you machine embroiderers may already know this, but I thought maybe there's a couple tips or tricks that new people may not know completely. There's so many new people joining our industry that and in this exciting hobby and combining a fabric cutter or the AccuQuilt go dies where they cut precise shapes with machine embroidery applique, match made in heaven. But there's a few things that you need to be aware of. Now, when you cut a shape, it is an exact size. You can choose to inflate it in your software, but one of the nice things about using an exact size as your placement line um, to cut from is that you're no longer restricted to doing this trip typical machine embroidery satin stitch applique. You can do a little bit more delicate work and the Brilliant software for example has the e-stitch or the blanket stitch which is the applique that I grew up learning how to do on a sewing machine. And I can now do this on an embroidery machine using pre-cut shapes of pre-cut shapes of my fabric. So let's just go with that. Now, a couple things that you need to make sure of. Um, you, an embroidery machine is all about being stable. You have to have your hoop attached to your machine because your hoop is going to be constantly moving. So everything in that hoop needs to be fixed. Otherwise you get lumps and bumps and puckers or your finger goes underneath the needle and we really don't want to see any more pictures of that. So make sure everything in your hoop is affixed properly so that your hands are nowhere near your needle. Now, when you're cutting fabric using a die cut of some sort, or whether it's an electronic cutter or a die cut, you need to make sure that your fabric is stable, completely stable, paper-like. This is done by adhering a fusible to the back side of your fabric. And this turns it into a paper, so there's no stretch whatsoever in it. This allows you to exactly cut the shape that's you are giving it so that when you are cutting the fabric you actually get an exact shape. Now there's many products out there that you can use. My, um, the one that we will be using for this project is by Thermoweb. It's called Heat and Bod Stretch and it's a new type of fusible that they were just released this uh, past year and I'm using the light version because that's the sewable version. Now it's called Heat and Bond Stretch and this isn't this is regular cotton fabric that I'm working with. The reason I like this is because it's nice and thin and it has a nice hand to the fabric. It cuts cleanly, it seals the edges nice, but it's lightweight and you can't even tell that it's there for the most part when you do your applique. The other nice thing about it is that it works on knits. So if you are doing a t-shirt and you cut out your applique shapes out of a knit fabric, it's stable and you can but it stretches. So you can cut your stable shapes out, fuse them to your knit, and even if you don't sew around it, your, it stretches and it doesn't pop. And that's always been an issue because the knit may stretch, but the adhesive doesn't stretch. This adhesive stretches. So check it out if you can. But either way, I'm using it on cotton, and it's created a nice paper-like um, surface. So I am able to take it to my die cutter and cut out my shapes. Now I'm going to show you uh, some close-up work on how those shapes can fit exactly in your pre-cut lines or pre-stitched lines that were created from the Embrilliant software and stitched on my embroidery machine. So let's get a closer look. Okay, so the shapes that are in Embrilliant Essentials, the replacement line for your, that you create your cutting, that your die cut is created from, is exact and it's stitched in our hoop. Here is one of the AccuQuilt dies that matches the shape. And you can see here, here's our um, shape with our fusible still attached, and it's still very paper-like. So when it's on this shape, it is an exact fit. So our shape, which is cut out of our die, basically um, exactly from the placement line, fits our paper-backed fusible exactly in our hoop. Now we need to 
make sure that when once we release the liner, remove it, that the shape still fits. A distortion can happen. The weakest part of this particular die is this long narrow piece. So if you start picking from this end and peeling right here, even though it seems nice and easy, you could easily stretch this out of place and you don't want to do that. So one of the tricks that I've learned is to kind of avoid the, the long points if possible and work from the, the back side so you have it facing up and kind of roll the edges towards you and lightly separate the so you're not really pulling fast, you're just kind of working its way and just releasing the liner. So you're not really pulling it and now when you place it into place you're going to want to make sure that it is put exactly in the running stitch line equally on all sides. As If you spend a little bit more time now making it fussy and making sure that it's equal because the placement, the finishing stitch, it's going to go right along that edge. So I see I have a little bit of space here, but I don't see any space here. So I need to kind of scooch it down so that it is equal, so that my shape exactly fits in this spot. And yes, it may take a little bit, depending on how fussy you are. And if you're putting this in competition, you're going to want to be real fussy. But uh, uh, machine embroiders usually like to use the two foot rule. So even though I know this is is this is going to actually this is pretty perfect but from two feet away that's how close you want to judge you don't need to be pulling and pushing each individual fiber into place that's just going to make more distortion so now that I have it in place I need to press it and you want to make sure that you follow the fusible instructions that came with the the whatever fusible brand that you used so the one since I'm using light it only says to press it into place and hold it two seconds and you're not going to want to iron it okay you're going to want to just press it into place so that it fits now you can still make some adjustments if you heat it up and you found that it's really really out of whack and you need to make adjustments while it's warm you can usually make some but I usually tell people to go just slowly and put it in here and this will be perfectly fine now when you're working with real intricate shapes for example this this uh, stem from one of the flowers it's very narrow it's very thin and it's very easy to be distorted however it fits perfectly when it's got the paper backing so we know what that's going to be it so you need to take whatever care removing this so again I work from the the large area this is just a physics mathematics whatever science thing and I just I don't pull it I just I want to just kind of coax it and release it and hopefully your release liner comes out nice now in this shape because it ha can it's like it's almost like cut on the bias so it's going to be really wobbly one of the tricks that I do is I will work on one end at a time and then mush it into place as needed so I want to make sure that this end point here is exactly on that end point there because that's where it needs to be and I will take my iron and I'm using the little clover wedge that does not have steam holes it has a nice flat bottom on it and I am just going to press this slightly into place just tack it wasn't even really a press it's just held there let me carefully lift it up you can see it's it's still attached now I take this other end and I place it on its side and I make sure that it fits exactly into place and I will just tack it there you can see when you move your if you notice the tip of the iron you can actually move it so you want to be really careful when you're pressing this and while I'm working that I'm going to massage it and, and make it just fit and just lightly tack it so that it fits exactly in there and that running stitch of the placement stitch that's exactly where my finishing stitch is going to be so I just need to make sure that it's perfect if I take the time a few extra moments to carefully release my liner to carefully place it and press it into place when I go to the machine and I do my finishing stitch it's going to be perfect and we all want to have nice perfect attached um, applique shapes that have a nice delicate edge so you're not limited to only using the satin stitch which is very forgiving 
So, we finished stitching our designs at the embroidery machine. And as you can see from the close-up, the finishing stitch hugs the applique shape exactly. And that is because we took a little bit more time by fusing it into place and not stretching or distorting our shapes. And the placement line created by the Embrilliant software is exact for your pre-cut shapes. One other trick that I can give you is on the snowflake, if you noticed, my placement stitch was the white color and my finishing stitch was the white color. So the two, even if you were just a little bit off, they could mask it, be a little bit of camouflage. And that is a nice way to try a different technique if you're creating your own designs and brilliant stitch artist, or if you're using the AccuQuilt shapes from the AccuQuilt edition of Embrilliance Essentials, and try out using that, either the blanket or the e-finishing stitch to create a different style of machine embroidery applique. Happy stitching!